welcome back to the Chronicles of Aguna, the Arsenal podcast brought to you by Loserpool. Dot com and presented by me, Harry Simiou. Uh, this is a Sofa Sports Media production, as always. And on this special episode, because it is an international break and there's not much going on, not much football to talk about or worth talking about anyway, we're going to have a look at some of the other issues and some of the other stories that have been surrounding our club of late. It's well documented uh, that we were in the the running to land Ramon Monkey uh, from Roma, but he's ended up agreeing to go to Sevilla. I'm going to be asking the question tonight, have we missed the trick here? Joining me is Italian football expert Vittorio Campanile, my colleague over at Simply Serie A. He'll be shedding some light on Monkey's time at Roma, and he'll be giving us the lowdown on Napoli, who we have, of course, drawn in the Europa League quarterfinals. So a little bit different this week, uh, but something that you'll find just as interesting, I am sure. But before we get into it, a little bit of housekeeping, as I always say, I always forget to do this thing at the end, so I better get it out of the way at the beginning. If you haven't already, don't forget to vote for us at this year's FBAs, that's the Football Blogging Awards. The details are in the description below, and we are in the categories of Best Podcast and Best New Content Creator, so your support would be, of course, much, much appreciated. Um, Don't forget to subscribe on whichever platform it is that you listen to us from, and particularly to those of you who listen to the podcast via YouTube, we are very close to hitting 1,000 subscribers. So if you could hit that subscribe button, if you haven't already, uh, that would be great and a huge help to us. And and I thank you for that in advance. I also want to say thanks actually uh, ahead of time to those of you who have sent me some wonderful messages over the last few days um, following some abuse I took on on social media and and a horrible email that I received um, from from someone uh, who didn't agree with my views on Unai Emery. That's absolutely fine. Everybody's entitled to an opinion. And, you know, having calmed down a lot about it, you know, you just ignore idiots like that, don't you? At the time, I I was really wound up. I'm not going to deny that. Um, And I was angry and I wanted to smash someone's face in, to put it politely. But, um, you know, I've learned a lot. It's done and dusted. And uh, we move on. But thank you to all of those of you who who sent me those messages. I, I really, really do appreciate it. So, right, let's get down to business. Joining me on the line is Italian football expert and my colleague over at Simply Serie A. It's Mr. Vittorio Campanile. Welcome to the Chronicles of Aguna, my friend. Uh, how are you? I'm really fine. Thanks for joining me. Uh, the, the pleasure is ours, sir. The pleasure is ours, having someone of your knowledge to uh, let us into uh, some of the secrets of Italian football, I should say. Um, now, Vittorio, uh, there's been a lot made of, of, of Ramon Monchi, people talking about him um, as though he's, he's a genius and that he was all set to join Arsenal this summer, um, having left from Roma. It appears now that he's gone to Sevilla. He's gone back to Sevilla. He's spoken about it. He feels that well, he said that he feels that the offer was more attractive and he, he's gone there. It can't have been a financial um, sort of in reason, in my opinion. I don't think that Sevilla would be in the position to pay what Arsenal could pay. But um, from an Arsenal perspective, now people are talking about what a genius this guy is. And there's, they r- always run off a list of players that he signed and that he's credited for finding. But he didn't always have a great time at Roma, did he? And towards the end, things went a little bit south. What did you make of the end of his tenure at Roma? And and do you think he's to blame uh, partly for Roma's sort of dip this season? Yes, absolutely. I think he's a big part of this terrible season of Roma. Uh, You were saying the last part he didn't do very well. I thought in general, since he started, now one of the things... Uh, that a lot of Roma experts and fans are complaining is that Monkey pretty much got the best player of Roma and sold it and spent a lot of money in players who didn't turn out. Uh, Chic, 42 million euros, is terrible. I think he scored like five goals this season. Uh, Pastore, Tsonzi, uh, Cristante, there are a lot of players that Roma spent and a lot of money for that are playing really badly. And this is all due to uh, Monchi, who uh, has been terrible as a, uh, as a sport director. You know, you, you sell your top players, you hope to replace them with, with even better players possible, but it didn't turn out. And now Roma is for the first time out of the Champions League spot, and there's a big chance that they won't make it this season. 
And obviously, the players are the one who go in the pitch and play, but Monchi is the one who bought them. And so if they if they are performing that bad, then I think a uh, big responsibility of uh, is of the sport director. Absolutely. Is there a feeling in Italy that... Uh, Di Francesco was kind of hung out to dry because obviously for those of you who don't know Roma's manager uh, Di Francesco was recently sacked he's since been appointed uh, sorry replaced by Claudio Ranieri but a lot of people in Italy feel that Monkey kind of hung him out to dry with the business didn't give him the tools uh, to, to perform is that right? Well, uh, he said this winter that Roma didn't need to buy any players in the winter transfer window, which obviously wasn't true. And uh, so he didn't provide the tools, the option to Di Francesco to save his job because he didn't buy anybody uh, this uh, this winter. And uh, as well, the players that arrived this summer obviously didn't turn out to be very good. The only exception is Saniolo, but... He got it just because he sold Nangolan to, to Inter. Nangolan was probably the best player with Alisson that now is in Liverpool of Roma. So he sold the best two players of Roma and didn't get nothing exchanged. So, yeah, for sure he didn't help him. But you have to say that Monchi was probably the first supporter of Di Francesco. He wanted it and he supported during all the season. And you have to be honest, Roma started playing really bad from the beginning of the season this year. And still, Monchi always was backing Di Francesco. Yeah, so he's obviously a loyal man. He he had a good relationship with, with Unai Emery, didn't he, at Sevilla. He's gone back to Sevilla, a club I believe he played for as well. So he's obviously quite a loyal person. Like you said, he, he stuck up for uh, Di Francesco. Do you think Arsenal have, have missed the trick here by not doing perhaps enough to convince him that Arsenal was the only option for him have have we missed out that the Arsenal fans would want to know whether someone you know with the uh, knowledge that you have feels that we have missed out or if you feel like it's kind of a bit like yeah it doesn't really matter uh, can I be rude I think Arsenal fans should be celebrating because he went <laughs> back to Sevilla I think I think he, he has been terrible with Roma and my personal opinion is he's proved to be a success all in Sevilla he, he won three Europe League there. Outside of Sevilla, he didn't do nothing. And Roma was the first big chance he had outside. Big team, big city, and he did really bad. So in London, even a bigger city, a club with a lot of money to spend, but even, you know, big responsibility, biggest targets, I think it would have been a nightmare. And uh, he never said it, but I felt that he felt really the pressure. He couldn't cope with the pressure fans, Roma fans put on him. And that's one of the reasons why he failed. Uh, Sevilla, it's a small city uh, in Spain. You know, it's not Madrid or Barcelona. Uh, he's very well known. He's very well respected. He's a sort of hero there. So he doesn't have to cope with pressure. Everything he does, uh, you know, fans will trust him. Not the same in in, uh, in Rome. Not the same in Ar- at Arsenal. So I think, yes, the, as you were saying, uh, there were the relationship with the manager, with the coach. But he still had to make decisions, you know, buying players. One of the things Palotta uh, said about Monchi is that he was responsible even for the staff, for the medical staff, and he made a lot of changes. And he said, and Palotta said, this year is the year where Roma had more injured players. And again, I blame Monchi about that. So, you know, he he failed in very different situations. So I think if you are an Arsenal fan, you should be celebrating that he's not going to come to London. (laughs) <laughs> you've made me feel a lot better about him joining Sevilla now, that's for sure. And I'm sure you've made uh, the rest of the Arsenal fans and our listeners uh, feel better about that too. Now, moving on to, to the Europa League, Arsenal, of course, in the last eight and will face Italian opposition, uh, Napoli, managed by Carlo Ancelotti. Now, an Italian journalist today, uh, at the time of recording, we're recording on Wednesday night, has come out and said that Carlo Ancelotti believed uh, that he had the Arsenal job in the bag. Um, That, you know, he, Arsenal supposedly spoke to him, supposedly Arsene Wenger indicated that he would be a suitable replacement. That's been broken this evening uh, to us by uh, our partners, LT Arsenal on Twitter. Um, However, the feeling is that Ancelotti was rejected because the club in the end, felt that Unai Emery was a, a better appointment. What would you say to that? Because I, for me, you know, I rate Carlo Ancelotti very highly. I done, did some work for TalkSport at the time and I 
made a point of saying that Ancelotti was my number one choice. Can you believe that Arsenal made that decision based on what you know about Carlo Ancelotti? Well, Carlo Ancelotti is a great manager, but maybe he's not at the top anymore. Maybe he's heading down a little bit. And so that's maybe one of the reasons why Arsenal thought it wasn't the right decision to take him. Uh, the last experience he had didn't work out really well. And now Napoli is probably his chance to prove everybody wrong. But uh, it's not a, a top, top team like Arsenal should be, Chelsea, uh, Bayern Munich. So you see that he's heading a little bit down. And he has this big chance here in Napoli to prove everybody wrong. But I understand the reason why Arsenal didn't select him. Maybe, you know, after Wenger, maybe you're looking for a younger uh, manager, a manager who's uprising, who has uh, proved to be very good in the last year. You know, uh, Emery won the uh, Europe League three times. So, um, yeah, I can understand the reason, to be honest. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it, I, I get what you're saying as well. And, and you know, don't get me wrong. I'm not saying that I, I don't want Unai Emery and I'm... I, I'm you know, I was a bit sceptical at first. I think he's won me over in the last few weeks. But it just feels like when you hear a name like Carlo Ancelotti, that is a, a name that carries so much weight and is so powerful. It's hard to f- believe that a club could turn that that down. Um, but in terms of the Europa League, going back to that again, of course, the tie's been switched around because of Chelsea Um playing on the same nights as well. And now Arsenal will entertain Napoli at the Emirates first before going to the San Paolo. What is it like in the San Paolo? Because it is a cauldron of atmosphere, isn't it? Yes, it is. The problem is this year, uh, fans didn't turn out very often uh, at the San Paolo. There is a little bit of fight between the fans and uh, and uh, De Laurentiis, the owner of the club. Uh, so uh, fans are a little, little bit concerned. They're not happy of what the owner have done in the last year. But I'm sure that for a match so important, the atmosphere will be simply amazing. Yeah, I can imagine. And and I've watched a lot of Serie A this season. We, we speak about it regularly on a weekly basis. For those of you with any interest in Serie A, do check out our podcast at Simply Serie A, um, where we talk about all things Italian football. And Vittorio is, is one of our regular contributors. He's my right-hand man, as I call him. Um, but yeah, I mean, it, it's going to be a really difficult game for Arsenal, isn't it? What can we expect from Napoli in terms of uh, system or, or formation? How is... What has Carlo Ancelotti changed to sort of uh, since he's taken over, I should say, from from Maurizio Sarri? Well, uh, the difference is maybe Sarri was playing a better football, a nicer football to watch, but there were too much ups and downs. And especially in Europe, he couldn't manage the the team well. With Ancelotti, the team uh, is less entertaining, but... Uh, is more consistent, I would say. Uh, usually 4-4-2. And uh, the biggest achievement, I would say, that Ancelotti had this year is to make Arik Milik a striker again. He struggled so much with Sarri. He couldn't f- see the pitch very often. And he wasn't playing like everybody expected. Now with Ancelotti, Milik is scoring a lot and he's proving to be a very good striker. So I think that's the uh, most difficult opponent for Arsenal, stop Milik is, is going to be the priority for Arsenal. But then you have to remember there's Martens, there's Insigne, there's Cayon. So Napoli has a lot of options. Um, what can be the difference for Arsenal, for me, is the international experience. Because Napoli never reached, uh, never gone very far in the, in the international cups in the past year. So they don't have that experience that could really make a difference in such an important match. How do you see this one going, Vittorio? What What are your initial thoughts? I don't know how much of Arsenal you get to watch, but if you you know if you're looking at this, you have to stick your neck on the line. Do you think that Napoli will have too much for Arsenal, or do you think uh, Arsenal have the power to to dump Napoli out? I think it's a uh, it's very open. Now, one thing that I didn't expect was Ancelotti saying that for for him. It's more important reaching the second place in Champions League in, uh, in Serie A, sorry, than winning the Europe League. So he's going to focus on on the Serie A before then the, then the the Europe League. While I was thinking that you know Napoli second is pretty much uh, already in the Champions League spot, so I thought he would rest players before the Europe League. But it doesn't look like he's going to do it. So this can help Arsenal uh, because one of the problems of Napoli is that. 
Ancelotti hasn't got a big uh, list of players. Um, the starting eleven is quite good. Uh, maybe has other two, three subs of that level. But after that, the the the, the ability of the team, the the level of the team drops. And so this could be a big problem for Napoli if they get some players injured. They're going to play Roma very soon. So, you know, um, the biggest problem with with Napoli is do they have enough players for for playing to competition like that? Could that not be mind games, though, on Ancelotti's part? Could it not be him just trying to take the pressure off himself in the Europa League? Or, or do, you gen, do you genuinely believe that that is what he's going to do? That's a good question. Uh, uh, obviously, they have Roma next week, and it's a very important match. We saw that Inter won, and they're close to Napoli. You know, a seven-point gap is not that much. You lose a couple of matches, and, and they're, they're up. That's right. At the same. So they have to be careful. So obviously, uh, Ancelotti have to take care of the, of the, of the league as well. And, uh, you know, as, as I said before, fans are not very happy. If Napoli loses the second spot, they're going to be really irritated. So uh, I think Ancelotti has to focus on the, on the campionato as well. Even though I thought Europe League for a team like Napoli would be so important because, uh, and you hear me say this a lot on the other podcasts, Napoli didn't win that much in Europe, so they should be focused at the Europe League because it's their only chance to win a trophy in Europe. And last time they did, they had Maradona still playing. So we're talking about 20 years ago. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, you're right. You're, you're completely right that Ancelotti's going to have to uh, find the right balance. But the same can be said for Arsenal because Arsenal are right in the mix for a, a top four finish in the Premier League as well. I think a lot of us as fans didn't expect us to be so close to it at this point in the season. And, and kind of like last season, we expected to be in the situation where it was Europa League or bust. Whereas this time, we're well within, you know, the, the, the challenging positions to get in the Champions League. We could do it that way too. And it's hard now for Unai Emery to find the right balance because do you go for one and, and risk making the wrong decision? Do you try and, uh, you know, split your resources and, and go for both and end up, not achieving any of them. It's a really difficult position for both of these managers to be in. The only thing I would say is that probably Ancelotti's in a slightly better position because, of course, his chances of finishing in the top four are a lot stronger than Arsenal's are of finishing in the top four in the Premier League. So Ancelotti, in my opinion, will get Champions League football next season regardless but like you said, the Napoli fans, they're not going to accept Napoli dropping down to third or fourth, are they? No, absolutely. And again, I think one of the points that could make a real difference is the experience of playing in Europe that Arsenal players have and Napoli players haven't. Uh, you know, that Ramsey, uh, Kolchelny, that Arsenal has a lot of players with experience in Champions League, Europe League and so on. And Arsenal didn't reach the final in Champions League in the recent years, but they played uh, at that level. So I think it's really important and they know how to uh, find the time to, to relax, to focus, to recover, because you're going to lose a lot of energy. You're already tired. It's March. Uh, you've played already for seven months. So that could be a different, making a difference, you know, with players, with the experience of playing uh, at the international level. While Napoli, usually at this part of the season, was already out of all the European competition. And so they're not used to cope with playing on Thursday and on Sunday in March. So that could really make a difference. Yeah, that's a, that's a really good point. And, and you're making me feel a lot better about the whole tie, I've got to say, Vittorio. Um, Vittorio, thank you so much for joining us. I, I know you're really, really busy. Um, I'm sure a lot of our listeners have an interest in Italian football. Um, they can head over to our podcast, of course, which is Simply Serie A, with me, Vittorio, and Tommy Milanese every week. Um, but also, Vittorio, you have your own YouTube channel, don't you, where you put out a daily video on Serie A in English. Do you want to let our listeners know how they can find that yes absolutely thanks for mentioning uh yeah on youtube if you dial vittorio campanile maybe i can send you the link they they can find me and every day i usually talk about lazio but in general of italian football so if you're interested in, in Serie A, you can check me out on youtube brilliant stuff and, and we will include the link in the description below so all you'll need to do is click on that and uh, you can check out vittorio's channel it is brilliant 
really insightful and definitely worth uh, listening to, watching as well. Uh, Vittorio, thank you so much. And uh, I'm sure we'll speak again very soon. My pleasure. Thanks for having me. That brings us to the end of another episode of the Chronicles of Aguna. A slightly shorter one, but like I said, uh, there wasn't any Premier League football to discuss and there won't be for another week or so too. Uh, So we thought we'd speak to Vittorio, get some insight into Napoli, our upcoming Europa League opponents, and find out whether or not we did actually miss a trick in losing out on the signature of Ramon Monchi. Don't forget, subscribe, like, share, comment, do whatever it is you've got to do. And we'll be back next week with another podcast. Until then, take care of yourselves.